I was able to go to Russia, I guess it's been four years, is the first time I went. And uh, we, so our conference has a relationship with a district in Russia that's called the Central Black Soil District. I get that right. I always leave the central part off. It's about the size of Texas in um, southern, southwestern Russia. Is that right? I'm really bad at geography too. There's just no helping me. Well, if both of us are bad, then we're never going to get it right. <laughs> So, um, part of what we do is to provide financial and prayer support and to spend time talking about the ways that we do ministry and the ways that they do ministry so that we can help partner in doing it better in both places. So, four years ago, I was able to go out and um, tour some of the um, churches in that district and meet their pastors and worship with them. And then two years ago, I got to go out again and go to their annual conference and, um, and spend some time doing some continuing education in pastoral counseling for their pastors pastors and lay people, which was amazing. So I got to meet Alexander and Elena on the last trip two years ago. They um, provided a bio that I'm just going to read for you so that you can know a little bit about them before they preach for us. I've been practicing their last names, but I probably will butcher them, and for that I'm sorry. So Reverend Alexander Pereira serves as the superintendent of the Central Black Soil District the larger of the two districts that make up um, South Russia Annual Conference. He's also the pastor of Resurrection United Methodist Church, one of the district's largest churches in the city of Voronezh. Prior to coming to Resurrection, he was the pastor of a UM church in Sochi. Pastor Alexander is married to Galena, a physician specializing in oncology radiology, and they have two grown daughters. Irina is married and lives with her husband and two children in St. Petersburg in the north of Russia, and Katya, who's also married, and her husband live in London. In his ministry, Pastor Alexander is deeply committed to social outreach ministry, including work to combat drug and alcohol dependency. Resurrection Church has a long-standing student ministry also focused on foreign students, especially from Africa, who attend one of the several universities located in Voronezh. Resurrection is also well known for its outstanding music ministry, and their choir has visited our conference in the past and performed at our annual conferences and in churches around uh, our conference. And they have now developed a musical play that is being used for outreach in southern Russia. He is one of the key leaders involved with the work of the United Methodist Camp Cristal, and he's an academically oriented pastor. He has, a, um, has been very supportive of the development of Bible study and the continuing education work for pastors and leaders, which has been part of our Baltimore, Washington, and Black Soil Covenant partnership that we've been working on for the last couple of years. Elena Melnik Melnikova, that's the one. I, Pereva I could get. Poor Elena, I can't. I tried. She's the chair of the Administrative Council of the South Russia Annual Conference and is the president of the United Methodist Women in Russia, all of the United Methodist Women in Russia. She's a very active lay person. She's a member of Transfiguration United Methodist Church in Volgograd, once known as Stalingrad, and the scene of a pivotal battle during World War II. If you're um, a history buff, you'll remember that town. She has also completed her studies at the Methodist Theological Seminary in Moscow and is a candidate approved for pastoral ministry. Though she's not under appointment at this time, I heard a rumor that she might be soon. Elena's husband, Alexander, is also a seminary graduate, and in fact, that's where they met. And he presently works as a design engineer in the energy industry. And they have two young daughters, Masha and Alexandra. How do you say her nickname? Isa? Isa? Isa. Isa. Not going to happen. <laughs> Alexandra. Okay. We'll practice later. Masha, I got to meet Masha um, when last time I was there, she was still pregnant with Alexandra, uh, and Masha is just the cutest little girl I've ever met. She's adorable. But we're not talking about them. Uh, Elena has a tremendous heart for ministry with families and parents and in developing women's leadership. She has a passion for celebrating the Wesleyan doctrinal and ministry heritage and finding ways of bring, bridging it into the Eastern Orthodox tradition that is so much a part of the cultural landscape in Russia. She is very energetic and a continuous fount of creative ideas for reaching people with the gospel and showing how it is the perfect foundation for healthy lives and families. In her home city, she leads a domestic Wesleyan study group, which is a combination of accountability and Bible study group. She leads an early Christian development center for children from infant to three years, combining early childhood development techniques with age-appropriate Christian teaching. And we are just so glad that both of them are here this morning to share God's word with us. So let's greet them as they do so.
Dear brothers and sisters, uh, dear friends, I greet you uh, by the name of Jesus Christ. Вы знаете, это все, что я хотел сказать по-английски. So this is probably uh, it. I don't know anything else in English. Я сейчас слушал вот Патрицию и у меня нимб не светится над головой. And so I've been listening to Trish presenting us, and uh, can you see a uh, nimb over and over my head? Я узнал о себе много такого, что сам уже забыл. I found out a lot of uh, stuff about myself that I don't really know or I forgot about it. Ну, тем не менее, давайте продолжим. И сегодня я хочу поделиться с вами словом, которое Господь положил мне на сердце. But I don't want to stick to that, but I'd rather share with you the word of God uh, and the sermon that God has uh, put into my heart today. Я достал очки. So my glasses go up. Смотрел на часы. And I looked at my watch. Это, знаете, есть анекдот, когда новичок пришел в церковь и спрашивает уже у старожила. And so there is a joke uh, about a person who comes for the first time to a church and he asks the people who are long church goer, long time church goers. Ну, спрашивает все, что, что он видит, и спрашивает, что это означает, что, когда что-то происходит. And so he would uh, come to them and say, uh, and see, see, he sees something around him and asks, uh, what is that, what that stands for, what does this stand for, so all kind of things like that. Спрашивает, тут пастор вот зашел на кафедру, это что означает? Uh, and he asks, so the pastor stepped uh, up to the pulpit, what does it mean? Ну, это сейчас будет проповедовать. Well, it means that he is going to preach right now. Он Библию открыл, зачем? So he opened the Bible, and why does he do that? Well, he... Oh. Ну, как же, будет проповедовать из Библии. He, he will read the scripture. Очки достал, зачем? Uh, he, uh, put, Почему? He put on his glasses. Why did he do that for? Ну, плохо видит. Uh, because he sees it, you know, he has bad vision. О, а зачем он снял часы и положил перед собой? And Что это значит? And why did he uh, take off his glasses or take off his watch and put it in front of him? А это ничего не значит. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> это анекдот про меня, я могу увлечься, знаете, вот уже сейчас анекдот не входил вообще в программу. And so uh, this is this joke is about me because uh, I can uh, get really into the point when I'm talking, and I forgot about everything. And exactly this joke, uh, especially this joke, was not a part of my sermon initially. No, я постараюсь. Меня Лена будет ограничивать. And so I will try to stick to the point, and uh, Elena would, you know, set the limits for me. <laughs> Итак, друзья мои, вот последний weekend мы были уже здесь, в Америке, и мы видели, как страна празднует День Поминовения. So last weekend you all had this uh, memorial uh, celebration, and we could witness how your country celebrates and uh, the Day of Remembrance, and remember, remembers people. В этот день мы были в Вашингтоне и видели огромные толпы людей, которые радовались, шли со знаменами, and, we, and we've got a chance to be that day uh, in Washington DC and we saw a lot of people marching around with the banners uh, flying in the sky and that was a very powerful uh, scene, right? And so when we uh, entered the, uh, one of the Smithsonian's museum, the uh, Museum of the American History, uh, the main uh, exhibition there was the uh, Star Spangled Banner. Знамя, которое было поднято как символ свободы и независимости вашими прадедами, вашими предками, которые сражались и победили в этой борьбе. And this banner was raised in the middle of the huge battle by your, uh, your ancestors uh, in the fight for the independence who fought for the independence, who fought for freedom, and who won. 
Вы знаете, я вообще обратил внимание, что у вас э, очень э, особенное э, отношение к своему флагу государственному. Буквально на каждом шагу его можно встретить, и на каждом доме он висит. Make it any step to any direction, you could see the banner, your national uh, banner, and it is always on, on the, above the front doors of almost any house. And even here we can see your uh, flag standing by. Ну, наверное, больше нигде я такого почитания, вот, государственной такой реликвии, я не видел. And I probably would never uh, ever see such a reverence uh, to a state uh, symbol or state flag anywhere else. В чем причина, вот я подумал, почему вот такое трепетное отношение, казалось бы, вот куску материи? And so I wondered why uh, do you have this special reverence toward a piece of fabric, actually? И я начал вспоминать вообще историю о знаменах и понял, что это в общем-то, исторически сложилось, потому что э, все боевые э, действия, э, войны, какие-то сражения, они, они всегда сопровождаются вот, э, наличием в армиях вот, э, знамен. So I started to, uh, to think about all the banners appeared throughout the human history, the history of mankind, uh, in all kinds of battles and very uh, important occasions. And I found out that Almost at any major prominent occasion, there would be a banner И present. And oftentimes, the uh, winners they would take down the banner of the that was former, uh, you know, in the former regime, and they would put on the new banner, the, the banner that stands for them. А, скажем, воинское подразделение, которое утеряло знамя. Оно просто расформировалось. Действительно, почему такое сакральное, я бы сказал, мистическое вот значение придается вот знамени? So what is so sacred and so mystic about a banner? И я думаю, это восходит туда в древность, в старые времена и в библейские времена, и мы можем увидеть это. And I believe that this takes source at very old, in very old biblical times, and if we open the scripture, we can see it there. Давайте с вами откроем книгу Исход. If we turn to Exodus, 17 глава, chapter 17. Из восьмого стиха я хочу прочитать. И пришли амаликитяне и воевали с израильтянами в Рефидиме. Моисей сказал Иисусу, выбери нам мужей и пойди сразись с амаликитянами. Завтра я стану на вершине холма, и жезл Божий будет в руке моей. И сделал Иисус, как сказал ему Моисей, и пошел сразиться с амаликитянами. А Моисей и Аарон и Ор взошли на вершину холма. И когда Моисей поднимал руки свои, одолевал Израиль, а когда опускал руки свои, одолевал Амалик. Но руки Моисеевы отяжелели, и тогда взяли камень и подложили под него, и он сел на нем, а Аарон же и Ор поддерживали руки его, один с одной, а другой с другой стороны, и были руки его подняты до захождения солнца. И не зложил Иисус Амалика и народ его острием меча. И устроил Моисей жертвенник и нарек ему имя Иегова Неси, что означает Господь знамя мое. Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men, and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in, my, in mine hand. 
So Joshua did as Moses had said to him, and what with Amalek, and Moses, Aaron, and Ur uh, went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass, when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed, and when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon, and then Aaron uh, her stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the age of the sword. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi, which means uh, the Lord is my uh, banner. Вот, пожалуйста, здесь не было знамени как такового в привычном нам понимании. So you don't see uh, a banner uh, as we uh, perceive it, a banner as a piece of fabric in this, in this uh, passage. Но Моисей, стоявший на вершине холма, с поднятыми руками и державший в них жезл Господень, он и был этим знаменем. But Moses standing there up, uh, all the way up the hill and holding his hands up high and holding the rod of God in his hand was their banner. И когда воины видели его, видели его поднятые руки, видели, что он молится за них, они побеждали. Значит, знамя — это то, что дает силы побеждать, то, что объединяет людей, то, что uh, дает им ощущение единства с, uh, с тем, что больше их самих, что uh, ч частью чего являются они сами. And so banner is, the, is something that gives them power to win. It's something that unites them. It's something that gives them uh, the, this feeling of being a part of something bigger than they are themselves. И, наверное, в этом сила uh, вот этого uh, знамени, сила флага. И, конечно же, uh, если повесить uh, на uh, шесте просто кусок uh, материи, то мы не будем испытывать к нему никаких чувств. Важно то, что изображено на нем, и and то, что изображено на нем, важно, что оно символизирует. And so uh, it is very important to see this banner in the battle. But if we put just a piece of fabric on the pole and have it there, it won't work, because it is very important to know what this banner stands for. What are those symbols that we see on the banner, and what do these uh, symbols mean to us? Еще один эпизод хочется вспомнить, во время, который произошел во время исхода. И описан он в книге чисел, в 21 главе. Если вы помните, там говорится о том, что Бог за ропот народа наслал на них кару, наказание в виде ядовитых змей. And so, uh, if we turn back to the scripture, we would uh, recall another story, which is written in the book of Numbers. It is the story of the people of Israel, uh, when they uh, were discontent with uh, whatever was going on around, and they started to uh, talk unpleasant th things to God, and God sent uh, po uh, poisonous uh, snakes around them. And this is, uh, Book of Numbers, uh, chapter 20, uh, 21. And so when they, uh, those snakes would bite people, the people would get sick and eventually die. И пришел народ к Моисею и сказал, согрешили мы, что говорили против Господа и против тебя. Помолись Господу, чтобы он удалил от нас змеев. И помолился Моисеев о народе. И сказал Господь Моисею, сделай себе змея и выставь его на знамя, и всякий ужаленный, взглянув на него, останется жив. И сделал Моисей медного змея и выставил его на знамя. И когда змей ужалил человека, он, взглянув на медного змея, оставался жив. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten when he looketh upon it shall live. 
And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole, and it came to pass, to pass that it, if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Что же произошло? This is, oh, this is Numbers, chapter 28, verses 7 through 9. Что же произошло? Почему люди, ужаленные ядовитыми змеями, взглянув на изображение этих же змеев, вознесенные на знамя, на шесте, на высоком, вдруг выздоравливали и оставались живы? So how it might happen that those men who were bitten by the uh, poisonous snake would look up onto the same snake, uh, raised all the way up on the pole, and would become better and would stay alive. Вот смысл этого, наверное, не был понятен и самим тем, кто был ужален, кто спасся благодаря этому взгляду на медного змея. And so the meaning of this probably was covered uh, even from the people who participated in the whole thing, who looked up at the uh, brass serpent and stayed alive. Я думаю, сам Моисей не, не очень понимал, что происходит. Он просто выполнял Божий приказ. Moses, uh, И весь глубокий смысл того, что происходило, открылся только гораздо позже, уже в Новом Завете. И именно об этом говорит Иисус в третьей главе Евангелия от Иоанна. But the, uh, the true meaning of this uh, situation was, was revealed to people only when Jesus came in the New Testament and he speaks about that in the third chapter of uh, the Gospel of John. Иоанна, третья глава, 14-15 стихи. Читайте. И как Моисей вознес змею в пустыне, так должно вознесено быть Сыну Человеческому, дабы всякий верующий в Него не погиб, но имел жизнь вечную. Аминь. And so the uh, Gospel of John, uh, chapter 3, verses 14-15 reads. And, Итак, as, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. Итак, вот тот удивительный прообраз, который дан э, нам в Ветхом Завете, он смысл этого открывается полностью уже в Новом, во Христе. So the uh, image that has, given, has been given to us in the Old Testament is truly revealed in Jesus Christ in the New Testament. Христос говорит о своем вознесении, конечно же, на Голгофский крест. And Jesus talks about his... Uh, ascending on the cross of the uh, Calvary. И он говорит об этом вознесении как об условии того, что люди, уверовавшие в него, будут спасены. And he talks about it, it meaning that if the people will believe that and uh, if they see that and accept that he is there on the cross, this is the main uh, way he, they are going to be saved. Что же получается? Люди, которые находились в пустыне, что значило для них изображение медного змея? Они фактически смотрели на причину своей смерти. So what uh, did people who looked at this brass serpent in the uh, desert, what do, uh, did they really think? They were uh, watching the reason of their death. Что для нас, для всех, причина нашей духовной смерти? What is the uh, reason for our, our spiritual death, death for every one of us? Конечно, грех. And it is sin, of course. И когда мы смотрим на распятого Христа, and if we look at Jesus crucified, принявшего на себя грехи всего человечества, в том числе наши, who has uh, borne the sins of all the uh, men and Of our, uh, and our sins also. Мы, собственно говоря, видим тоже причину своей гибели. Мы видим наши грехи. We see the reason of our death in him. We see our own personal sins. Увидеть свой грех, понять, что это и есть причина твоей смерти, это путь к спасению. 
and to see your sin, to see uh, that this is the way that leads you to death, is the only way uh, how you can be saved. And this is the way provided to us by Jesus. And so today Jesus is our banner. Это та сила, которая объединяет нас. He is the power that unites us. Которая вдохновляет нас на борьбу. He is the power that give, gives us encouragement to go on and fight. Которая дает нам ощущение uh, единства, ощущение того, что мы являемся частью чего-то большого, uh, целого, того, что мы называем церковью. He is, the, uh, he is the power that gives us this feeling of unity, this feeling of being a part of something bigger, uh, of something greater than we are. And this is uh, the bigger thing is the Church of Christ. И вы помните, что uh, я уже сказал, если подразделение какое-то воинское теряет знамя, оно расформировывается, оно перестает существовать. And so uh, you remember that I told you already uh, about the troops that lose their uh, banner and get uh, reformed or get uh, you know, shut down. Если церковь когда-нибудь потеряет свое знамя, потеряет Иисуса, она перестанет быть церковью. And so uh, the same thing happens to church. If a church at some point of its way loses Jesus, loses the, the focus on Jesus, the church won't exist. А пока... Иисус — это тот, на кого мы смотрим. И об этом сказано в послании к евреям, в 12 главе. стихи. Посему и мы, имея вокруг себя такое облако свидетелей, свергнем в себя всякое бремя и запинающий нас грех, и с терпением будем проходить предлежащее нам поприще, взирая на начальника и совершителя веры Иисуса, который вместо предложенной ему радости претерпел крест, пренебрегший посрамление и восел одесную престола Божия». Amen. Wherefore, seeing we are also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of of the throne of God. Amen. Взирая на начальника веры, на того, кто обеспечил основание нашей веры. So we are looking unto Jesus, uh, the author and the finisher of our faith, the author, the one who started our faith. И совершителя этой веры, того, через кого мы имеем эту веру и имеем тот самый плод, ту самую награду ту самую э, победу, которую обеспечил нам Христос. То есть имеем жизнь вечную в Иисусе Христе. The, uh, he's our Redeemer here. He is our Savior. And through him, we, gave, uh, we receive the victory. So let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus, who is our banner, looking unto him, мы ощущаем силу бороться с этим миром. 
мы ощущаем силу отвергнуть запинающий нас грех. Господь, мы просим, чтобы Твое знамя, оно всегда развивалось над нами. Чтобы мы всегда взирали на Него. И тогда мы никогда не будем побеждены злом. Слава Тебе за это, наш великий Бог, Отец, Сын и Дух Святой. Thank you for all this, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.